I have a personal relationship with ice. I fell in love with ice the first time I went to the Arctic in the early 1970s, and it helps when you're falling in love to have something as attractive as this to fall in love with. And it's been an ongoing relationship. Um, it's something that um, has been somewhat obsessive, I suppose, if you go up to the Arctic in 1970 and go there every year since. But uh, one of the things that's been troubling, uh, like most relationships, I didn't really appreciate it until I started seeing less and less of the ice. It started, it was like, you know, I said, where, where, where'd you go last summer? You know, <laughs> used to be here for me all the time. And, um, and, and to be honest, I don't mind open water. I mean, there's, I mean, you can get waves and all that nice action on the beach, and it sounds nice, but that isn't like the Arctic. It is warmer now. Uh, in Barrow, in northern Alaska, than it has been in the last 400 years. People who measure ice have found that the area that has lost the most concentration, that has lost more than 50% of its ice, or rather 40% of its ice cover or greater, is this area right here, which is right where Cooper Island is and right where its source colony is here over, over in Herald Island. And, and that area is as large as three West Coast states. And if that much habitat loss was taking place anywhere else in the world where people were really noticing it, there would be all sorts of press. I mean, you probably couldn't get it off. You certainly can, couldn't get it off the front page if it was happening in the lower 48 on the mainland. But since it's happening up there where there are some guillemots and polar bears, and now fewer and fewer natives who are actually going out and hunting for things, um, one doesn't hear about it. There has been, uh, for the past three years, record retreats of the pack ice. Every two years, an area the size of Pennsylvania is lost in the Arctic pack ice because, because of this retreat. This is something that uh, is mentioned in Al Gore's movie, so I won't take credit for it, because he says he got the records out. But um, winter sea ice has not been decreasing because it's still cold in the winter and always will be in the Arctic, or at least will be for quite some time. But summer sea ice has been going down by 9% per decade. But most importantly is that ice volume, possibly not most importantly, but one of those little, fa uh, little known factors, is that the ice volume has decreased by 40% uh, in the last five decades. And this is the submarine data that the subs under the ice since the 50s, I mean, throughout the Cold War and on, have been measuring the thickness of the ice over them, so if they have to break through the ice, they know where they can break through. So there's a very good record of, of ice thickness um, over this period of time. And what it shows is that from the 50s to the 70s, the average ice thickness in the Arctic Basin was 3.1 meters in thickness. In the 1990s, which was the last data that came out, it was 1.8 meters thick. In May of 2002, we saw something that we never saw before. We saw a large area of open water where there's typically ice. And this isn't the best graphic, but I, I kind of have to show it to you because one of the most striking things I ever saw there is that I got out to the island in 2002 and there was open water north of the island in May, in late May. Um, and um, it's one of those things where, where you're standing there and, 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 and the sort of thing that Thoreau went to the woods for in terms of trying to see things be stable through time, you felt things were very unstable because, because you didn't see open water typically until August. And in August of 2002, we had a rather strange ice formation north of the island. The island's right about there. Even though the ice stayed close, ice is now in much smaller pieces than it, than it was in the past. One of the benefits is that, the, is that these pieces can now move with current, so you get much more picturesque ice offshore once you look at the satellite image than these large flows of like, uh, you know, tens of hundreds of miles.